for about 20 years, I have been helping a strange variety of organizations do one of two things, either market brands and products or manage reputation. And a, a lot of what I do has, has dramatically changed. And tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about something that I like to think of as calling movements. Uh, through an anecdote of something that uh, Ed mentioned, Rally St. Louis, that I am honored to have been part of creating and continuing to, um, to see it through. <coughs> so, you know, marketing and managing reputation is so different today than it was just five years ago. Uh, audiences simply aren't that interested in your brand, in your organization, uh, in you as a human being. I, I've seen a couple people from some great brands, some great St. Louis brands here tonight, uh, Energizer, uh, Panera, Wells Fargo. Um, stakeholders want to be part of those organizations. They want to play a role today, uh, which is dramatically different than a couple years ago. Um, and, you know, it's interesting and quirky things that stand out and capture the general public's attention or if, it's a, if we're trying to reach a business audience, that audience. The biggest challenge is breaking through the clutter. Um, and you know, if we're talking about a brand, we have to give someone a reason to care. And breaking through the clutter is so difficult today because we are surrounded by media. Uh, and that could be everything from everyone here probably has had a phone that has gone off at one time tonight and people are probably tweeting and texting and doing some other things like that. And uh, I've been sending Morse code. Nobody knows it, but I've been doing it all night. <laughs> but breaking through the clutter is such a challenge today. And so where we've tried to go is from campaigns, which I think we all traditionally think of in terms of marketing a brand or managing a reputation. It's evolving into movements. So what is a movement? It's a big lofty word that I'm saying, movement this and movement that. What a movement does is it builds loyalty, uh, which is, is very challenging to do when you're an organization or a region or a brand. You want to stir people's passions, get them engaged. Uh, you want to provoke people to be a part of a solution. And you want it to spread, and not necessarily through the way that things have traditionally spread, the US mail. But you want it to spread through technology and word of mouth, and that word of mouth today is not a conversation you're having with your neighbor uh, when you're standing in your driveway uh, talking about how terrible the guy across the street, how terrible his yard looks, but you want it to spread through things like Facebook and th things like Twitter and mobile. But movement takes an infrastructure. You have to actually build it. It takes a, star a strong message, which anyone who's worked in marketing or branding or, or public relations understands. It takes an effective platform, and I think that's one of the key things that's really changed because the nature of what constitutes a platform is very different today. And then it takes a very strategic approach to delivering that message to the outreach in and of itself. And more than anything, giving people a reason to care, laying in, the power of good. Because quite frankly, we're not good enough. You have to do something beyond yourself, beyond your brand. You have to do something that is meaningful to really get people to pay attention. This brings me to Rally St. Louis. Um, as I mentioned, uh, about two years ago, I wrote a piece in Forbes called St. Louis Doesn't Suck. And <laughs> Quite frankly, I wrote it because I was insanely pissed off. Um, I had been kind of inside of some of the ways we had tried to market economic development for the region for a number of years. Um, and I, I just, quite frankly, I thought it was wrong-headed the way we were going about doing it. And then I, you know, I would think to myself, I've lived here for eight years. I didn't grow up here, which I think has actually been an incredible benefit to me from my perspective of the region. Uh, and I don't say that to be demeaning in any way to anyone that grew up here, but I think I just come at it from a completely different perspective. And, you know, I said to myself, this is a great town. It's a great quality of life. And so what we wanted to do was create a movement for St. Louis. Because what we saw from 
what we saw from that Forbes article was this incredible excitement about, yeah, you know what? This place does not suck. We have a great quality of life here. It's not expensive to live here. We have great cultural amenities. We have great people. We have terrible pizza, but that doesn't matter except for pie. I'm referring to the cheese that I will not speak of tonight, which is not fit for human consumption, but still. We have, uh, I've lived, before I moved here eight years ago, I had spent 15 years living in seven different cities, my wife and I. And so I think that perspective helped me realize that, you know, when I compared and contrast all these places, that St. Louis really had it all. But the problem was two things. So when I, when I told people I, I moved here, they were like, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. What do you, what do you uh, St. Louis? It's flyover country. It's, I, I don't know, it, it wasn't bad or it wasn't good. Well, there was some bad. You know, people who Google the city because their spouse got a, offered a job and all they see is crime statistics, which are completely faulty, and that's a different conversation for a different day. But they, for the most part, people don't know what to make of this region, who haven't spent any amount of time other than maybe an overnight hotel stay for business. The other thing we found, or that I, that I had found talking to people over my eight years here was there's this strange internal self-doubt. And this is where I think my perspective helps because most of that was from people who lived their entire lives here. It's kind of like, eh, we're kind of a second class city, but that's okay, I like it here, I'm good. And to me, that's crap because, you know, I, I think all you have to do is kind of go taste test what's out there for an extended period of time, even a couple months, and you realize that the things we have here are very unusual uh, in terms of the, the aggregate of what makes this a great place to live, work, play, uh, to do business, to invest in. Which leads me to Rally St. Louis. We talked about a strong message, and here was the strong message. Are you tired of how we are perceived being framed by who we've always relied on? And that's, you know, this, is, this is true in any region you go to. Uh, your, your CBC, your regional chamber, those are typically the organizations that help frame a region's prosperity and what it's supposed to be and create a brand and a picture of it. But the thing is that today we have the digital tools available to us where people can play a role. So it doesn't matter who you are, from O'Fallon to O'Fallon, whether you're a stay-at-home mom or whether you run a big company, um, it doesn't matter. Today, we can have an opportunity to play a role. So giving people that opportunity through the platform, which was Rally St. Louis. And Rally St. Louis, I can't take credit for it. It was when, when we were passing around that article from Forbes and people were going, wee, wee. Uh, my partner, Brian Cross, sent me an email and he said, what if we were to create a platform where people can suggest ideas and then help fund them to help improve this region? And that's what Rally was. And then we built on that idea, a group of us, but it's very simple. It's an online brainstorm. We could do this to help either improve my neighborhood or, or help improve the perception of this region. And then if those ideas become popular because you can vote on those ideas, they move on to a funding round where if you like them so much, pull your wallet out and donate a dollar. And we have 2.8 million people here. And if, you know, if we have a project that costs, say, just over $100,000, we could easily fund that with 100,000 people giving a dollar. It's a very simple concept, actually. And then we talked about the strategic execution, the outreach, telling people about what is going on. One of the things about Rally in and of itself, we wanted it to ultimately fuel ideas that improve the perception of the region, both internally and externally. But we also thought that Rally being a first of its kind uh, vehicle would do that as well. And, it, and fortunately, it's, it's helping. I mean, it's, it's one piece of a very large puzzle that we're trying to contribute. But what we've been able to do from, from a marketing perspective is tell the story nationally about what we're trying to build with Rally and achieve in addition to all the other great things that happen to be going on in the region right now. Because for the first time in my eight years, you've got about 99% of the regional region's leaders and the grassroots kind of rowing in the same direction. But telling that story both internally and externally through a lot of channels. And what we've tried to do is promote, and we're seeing, I think, a stronger St. Louis. 
We're seeing, I think, a much prouder St. Louis from what I've seen in my eight years here. And we're starting to see a more accurately depicted St. Louis. I think people are starting to realize that we've got a great quality of life here. We've got burgeoning industries in a number of sectors that I've heard people talk about this evening. Uh, we've got a good quality of life. We've got no traffic to speak of if you've ever lived in DC as I have. Um, and people are starting to recognize these kinds of things. And it's all the aggregate. So what have we seen thus far? People are really, really engaged. And it's not just rally. They're engaged about the fact that, you know, Gabe Lozano and Lockerdome are becoming internationally well known as uh, Facebook for sports. That the guys at IL411 are actually doing mobile mapping if you're inside a Home Depot or Walgreens anywhere, that you're using their app to go find menthol cigarettes. Um, that Cultivation Capital is seeding a lot of really interesting companies, two of which I just actually mentioned, that are starting to make a name for themselves. That you know our biosciences are starting to get well known. That the Danforth Plant Science Center is one of the top three plant science research centers in the world. I mean, there is a lot of palpable excitement. And with Rally, you know, we're getting ideas submitted all the time. We have hundreds of ideas. We're getting recognition from national and media and global organizations. Uh, we announced this yesterday, and I'm incredibly proud to say that uh, I get to go to France for the first time ever because Rally was recognized by a global marketing chair as a model for regional marketing and citizen engagement. And we're going to France to accept an award in about three weeks, which is super exciting. For a change, I didn't even have to ask for it. We actually got it. It came to us. And, and I think most importantly, you know, this rally has always been about the rubber, where the rubber met the road. And that was, are people really going to invest in these projects? And we've announced publicly three. There's a fourth one that we will soon be announcing that I am incredibly excited about. And, and a few people in this room know, uh, but we should be hopefully announcing it within the next couple weeks. But what that means is that people have been seeing these projects and excited enough about them to make an investment. And it's been people like all of us in this room, but it's also been companies like Bundy North America, which gave $25,000 to see an organic food roof go up on a building downtown. Hardee's, which has given uh, $10,000 to one project and $2,500 to another. The CBC and the regional chamber have given funds to it. And I'm sure I'm leaving organizations out, but again, everyone rowing in the same direction because we're seeing the big picture that initiatives like Rally and a lot of the great things that are going on help change the perception of this region and paint an accurate picture outside of it. Thank you. <laughs>